out. Okay, and then we go to more and live on custom service. And if you want to check to make sure they're not there, that'll be great. Redirecting. And I guess we are live, right? Yep. But I don't see us there. I just see our picture. So, hmm. Well, we we we. What does it say? On custom live streaming service. Yep, it's live. So let's 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 get started. Uh, let's let's get started. Well, hi everyone. <laughs> I am GNG from GNG's Kitchen, and welcome to our kitchens today for another episode of Come and Cook with Us. I am today, as usual, with my beautiful friend Aslan. Good morning, Aslan. Good afternoon, I shall say. Good evening. Yes. Good evening here in the UK. That's right. It's about six p.m. here. That's right. So today we have a special treat with Easter just around the corner. Asla and I decided to start preparing our favorite Easter dishes, and we are both going to prepare lamb today. So I am going to prepare a rack of lamb with which is a lamb ribs with a parcel, parcel, I can't even speak, parsley. <laughs> Cross you are thinking parsley and shovel, aren't you, Purcell? Uh, I, it's like I'm sitting here going, okay, I am. I started in French and I'm going in English and I'm totally confused right now. So, what about you, Aslan? What are you going to prepare for us today? Well, I, I'm doing. I'm doing lamb shanks. Um, probably one of my favorite, favorite perhaps uh, lamb cuts. Um, and essentially, all we're going to do is brown the lamb. Um, add some aromatics and vegetables, pouring some stock, some wine before that, some stock, and we're going to leave it on the stove to cook for two and a half to three hours. But don't, don't you worry, we're not staying here that long. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> so, so this is this is um, one of my favorite ways to cook lamb because you can do it in at any time of the year and change the type of wine you're using for it. And um, we almost always have this at Easter time and the last few years we've been doing it for Christmas as well because we've got non-poultry eaters in the house so there you go oh I see well this is my my staple recipe for Easter for the last I don't know many years and actually quite frankly we do love lamb in this house quite often and it's one of my son's favorite dish and so when he sees the lamb out he's all excited about it so and this is very simple so let's shall we start it yeah cooking? you get started Kay. yeah Perfect. So mine is very simple. I have to use a tint here, as you can say, a little pan here. I am going to just do a couple of things to it, and I'm sure you can see me. So I have two beautiful rack of lamb, which I have not Frenched because I do like the meat on the bone. French just means removing all the little meat there. I have not done so. So I am going just to put those on my pan right there, and I am going to put over it just some olive oil and uh, salt and pepper and they're going to be going in the oven for a good uh, 15 minutes. This is like a two-way process but you'll be surprised in 30 minutes this dish is done and as a matter just of fact to, yeah just to brown just to brown them slightly. Exactly I'm going to just brown this slightly and then I'm going to put the crust and we're going to be making here live with all of you but what I've done also because lamb is quite fatty I removed a lot of the fat over it okay so, so it's it's all kind of meaty right there so the only thing i can do right now is just put some olive oil over it and just brush it over it just like so could one could, could one do this step on the stove as well just brown the brown uh, the fatty ends on the stove no no really because it's just kind of cooks perfectly underneath this because the underneath part i really don't do anything to it it's where the all the bones mm. part to it so this what gives it a nice sear then you can't mm. get on the stove without being getting too dry and then lots of salt and lots of pepper now i have to, to be honest here this is one of my favorite recipe, but as also was my most 
scare recipe to do. And I didn't do it for years. And one day I said, I'm going to give my hands to it. And ever since then, I slapped myself because it's the most easiest recipe to make crack of lamb. So this will go in the oven for 15 minutes. Uh, then we'll prepare the stuffing. But would you like to start with your sazlin? Cool. Sure. There you go. I'll, I'll go. I'll go over the ingredients um, that we're going to need. So I'm using lamb shanks. I, I love lamb shanks. Well, besides the tasty meat, the fat, uh, that when, when you cook it well, the meat practically falls off the bone. It's, it's meltingly soft. And because of the way they are, it's perfect to serve at a sit down dinner, one lamb shank per person, which is what we do um, for festive when we cook it during festive season. So besides the lamb shanks, We've got a few other ingredients. As far as aromatics go, I've just got some onions and garlic. I've got some vegetables here. We've got carrots. You can have one or two large carrots, cut them in rings, or I've got some baby carrots there. Some celery. We've got rosemary and bay leaf, leaves. And then we've got some flour just to thicken up the sauce a little bit. We've got some stock. You can use lamb stock or I prefer personally chicken stock because I find lamb stock a little bit overpowering. And mm -hmm. then for the flavor depth, a little bit of depth, we've got some mustard and some sun-dried tomato paste. I'm, I'm crazy over sun-dried tomato paste. I have to stop myself from not using it in everything. So, and then we've got, we've got some, a little bit of red wine and we've got um, some olive oil. Now, the idea behind this is that it's such a simple, almost, almost one pot dish. You put everything in there, saute, brown, yada, yada, put everything in there and then you leave it. It's hands off for about <sighs> two to three hours until the meat is falling off the bone. It does depend on the size of your lamb shanks. I've got fairly big lamb shanks here, so it'll probably go upwards of two and a half hours. And I wonder if it's... It. Mm -hmm. Go on. Can you do all that also in the oven? Or can yes, it just you can. Understand? So you'd be doing it at 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, again, for about two and a half to three hours. And if you are a slow cooker kind of person, again, read the instructions, but on high, something like four hours, on low, something like seven to eight hours. So it can be done on any of these things. And one of the beauties of this is that in when the weather is cold in winter, use some red wine. But or if you don't like red wine, use some white wine. But in the warmer months, whether that's autumn or spring at Easter, if you have a warm Easter weekend, use white wine for this recipe. So it, I call it slow braised lamb shanks for all seasons because that's exactly what it is. And the beauty of it is when we're done, we're left with a little bit of sauce in there. And while the celery and the onions practically fall apart. The carrots will retain their shape and mm -hmm. you have carrots and you have a little bit of gravy alongside your lamb shanks. So it's, it's, it's easy because you place everything in there and forget about it. And it's got ready-made gravy. It's got a little bit of vegetables as well. So that's why Perfect. we love this recipe. Wonderful, wonderful. That that sounds like amazing. It's very simple. I mean, I love when I love when dishes they cook themselves either in the oven or on the stove, and I can go and do my own thing. Just remember, put a timer and don't forget that you have a pot either in the oven or on the stove. Yeah, yeah. So so I made I made a portion earlier, and um, four p.m. and I was in bed. My window was open. <laughs> oh my god, my lamb! <laughs> So, so, so. It, it, it caught ever so slightly at oh. the end, you know, but hey, oh. it's perfectly fine. So. I have done that so many times, matter of fact, it's, it's, it's not even funny, but that's, a, you know, sometimes that's what happens. You always have to make sure that you have a timer, but don't leave the timer somewhere, then you can use it because you can hear it because it's just worthless on that side. So while you're going to do that, I'm going to go very quickly over what is the parsley cloth all about it. And it is okay. very simple, bread, parsley, shallots, garlic, and thyme. That's all you need. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be putting this on the little food processor and I already cleaned it and chopped it. As a, and then I'm gonna add my fresh thyme from my garden as well to it. Two crushed garlic, two garlic cloves, which I'm gonna cut actually a little bit 
so they will not be so big. And the shallot. So what I'm, you can just chop all this by hands, but why chop everything by hands when you can have this wonderful tool called a food processor can do everything for you, right? So I'm gonna put everything in there is on my food processor. I'm gonna give a first quick chop to this and then I'm gonna add the bread to it and finish it up because the bread has tendency to do a lot faster. So I want to get all the parsley chopped fine. So I'm gonna mute myself for half a second and do this so you guys don't get annoyed by my noise. Meanwhile, Aslan's gonna show us how we do the rest last step. Okay, so I'm going to start with browning the lamb shanks. So you've got a heavy base saucepan, a Dutch oven, whatever you like cooking in. So we've got a little bit of olive oil. You don't need much because our lamb is covered in fat, but we do want to give it a quick kick in terms of the amount of fat in there. So we're going to start by browning our lamb shanks. Not the easiest thing to do because you know you've got curves and dips and all sorts. So you do the best you can, brown it. This is going to take about five minutes. If your pan isn't big enough to fit them both, do them all four, however many you're doing, do them one at a time, do half the recipe each. So now I can't put my hobbit extractor on because it's gonna be noisy. <laughs> so we're going to smoke here. So we're going to start off by browning our lamb. Did I say noisy? No, you don't, you're not noisy. I am more noisy on this side and now my eyes are crying because of the shallot. <laughs> So we're just going to do this for about five minutes to three minutes, you know, it depends on how long it takes. We're just going for a little bit of color. That's all we're doing. Miss me, I'm back. All the back. I'm back. All righty. So this so what is have you got there? What I've got here is my parsley, thyme, garlic, shallots all bent together. And then I am going to add some melted butter to it as well. So it prepares the outer crust of my um, my lamb. And that's okay. it, this is, that's easy as that. So the lamb wraps have been in, in the oven for, they're going to be in there for a total of about 12 minutes or something you said? Correct, that's right. The first time is 12 minutes, which I have to keep track of the time, which is kind of nice if we start at 11, so I know exactly what time it is. And then I'm going to base, put a little bit of mustard over. Mustard is a binding agent, so it will be going on top of it and I'll show you how to do it. And then I'm going to add this to it. And that's it. We are all done for the outer crust. But what we also have a little treat for you, because lamb is excellent with potatoes. It's, it's almost like lamb potatoes. It's one of those two. I'm sorry, I'm crying. My, my shallots are just kind of strong. Uh, so I have power boiled some small little golden potatoes, which I'm going to be crushing, putting some sea salt, some olive oil, some fresh rosemary, and put it in the oven. So by the time my lamb is ready, my potatoes are ready, and I have lunch for me on the table. And if you're preparing it for a Easter dinner or a date night dinner, it will be just all perfect, all done for you. You have a, a very easy dinner assembled. So that's it. This is it. This is all I've done. Ooh. So I've got lamb shanks here, lightly browned as much as is possible. So all we're going to do now is to fry up our garlic and, gin, uh, garlic and ginger, onion and garlic. So if you've got enough fat in the pan, great. If not, add a little bit more olive oil. You don't really need much. So we're just going to saute those onions. Ah. Increase that heat back up to medium. Yeah. Start with the onions. 
So I've got onions that are quartered here. By the time the stew is done, those onions are going to be practically falling apart, um, but not completely so. So you'll still have a little bit of them and they'll add body to your sauce as well, to your gravy. My kitchen is smoking up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because we can't have a fan going while we're cooking. Because if I put this on, oh, is that noisy? No. Okay, this is noisy. Listen to this. Right. I'll leave it on okay. for now then. You see this? Windows open. <laughs> you hear this? This is why. So what I do when my family wants to talk to me and I'm in the kitchen, which is, this is my heaven. I put, my, I put that on and I put my head underneath it so I ignore them. Don't tell them that, okay? <laughs> oh, I turned it off because I have nothing on the stove, so. Um, yeah, so, so that's our, our onions. So now I've got it going for just about 30 seconds. All righty, and I can hear my little lamb sizzling back there. So it's, it's almost ready to come out. I think I have one more minute. Okay, to so come I'm, out. Just, I'm just gonna get on with the next step. So we've got carrots, celery, rosemary and bay leaves going in. So we're just stirring this around. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of all-purpose flour in there, just to just to thicken up the um, gravy a little bit that we're going to end up with. Ouch! Why do they make sauce with with candles that get hot? I can never understand that. The what? What has one? Right. So now we're going to add our a little bit of red wine. The red wine is there just to add a little bit of flavor. We don't want to overdo it and have it, you know, um, overpower the whole the whole um, stew. Okay, go on, Jandy. Okay, so um, now when I started this, I started with the oven at 400 degrees. So I just lower it right now to 350. And as you can see, my little rack of lambs are perfectly sizzling and they smell so good. So I'm just going to spread over some mustard. Dijon mustard all around them. Like I say, this makes it look a binding to the lamb. So that's that's the, the parsley crust or persil crust. Yes. Persil crust. <laughs> I know in Europe, persil, the persil is in French, but there is also a detergent, right? In Europe called Yeah, persil? that's right, that's right, yes. Yeah, so I remember I, see, I used to see that when I was the kid and then we also when you go to Asia there is they sell it also at Auchan from all places in China at Auchan I don't know if you still have that chain in, in England or not but all righty so this I am going to use this a little easier now one little trick I have to tell you please don't burn yourself because it's so easy but you cannot take them out and you just take this and you just I hope you could see what I'm doing just put it in, over it just like such. And if it falls down, bring it back up. There's unruly parsley today. <laughs> Just don't listen to me, that's all. <laughs> all righty. How's it coming over there, Aslan? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I was just kind of waiting for you. So we had the wine in there and the wine's reduced. So now we're going to add a little bit of sun-dried tomato paste. And we're going to add some mustard. So now, what kind of wine did you use today, and what kind of wine? Oh, did I you just used. Use? I, I just used a, a Malbec. Um, I I think more often than not, when I'm cooking with red wine, I'm not too bothered about the type of wine, as in whether mm -hmm. it's it's you know wh whatever type of wine you like drinking. And I've got uh, the one I'm using is is a Malbec, uh, what I call kind of my table wine. So it co cost me about ten pounds here. So 15 pounds a bottle. So, you know, 
And I'm only using um, for about half a glass in there, or maybe you saw me pouring a little bit more. I don't know. But yeah, so whatever wine you like to drink is what you use to cook with. Perfect. Well, this is done, as you could see. I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna try to come closer and roll them over and without losing them like I did last, last week. There you go. Ooh, this is hot. So back in the oven it goes for another 15 minutes. Now, I do like my rack lamp medium rare. So, and because uh, today we're doing it, it will be medium rare too. And I'm gonna have to put a little timer, 15 minutes. Perfect. Okay, Let's so I'll finish off here then. So I've added in, I, I've added in the aromatics, the vegetables, the herbs, the wine, the flour went in and then the wine went in and I've put some mustard and sun-dried tomato paste. And now I'm adding a whole lot of stock in there. which got prepared about an hour earlier, so it's cooled down. So we're going to heat that back up, bring it back to boil, and then we're just going to place our lamb shanks back in there, along with any juices, bloody or not, that's on the plate. Fabulous. Because we're re re you re are you reusing those, um, the juice, even if it's bloody? Yeah, I do. Good. good, me too. That's people toss it away, but it's good. It's still part of the cooking. Okay. So of course, of course, the the the, the whatever I'm cooking now, my all my four kids are vegetarian. So whatever I'm cooking now, I'm going to be eating over the next few days. I think I'll probably freeze two of them. Oh, so they can freeze well? Yes, you can freeze them. I mean, the carrots and the vegetables will come out mushy by the time you reheat them. But you know, if you if you or you could keep them in the fridge overnight, perfect. Two days in the fridge, it'll work well. But reheating the vegetables, they will not not so much mushy, but fall apart even more. Okay. Well, while Aslan is doing that and mine is in the oven, I have far boiled this morning some small little golden tomato potatoes and what I'm going to do with it now uh, parboils mean I put the knife in they were nice and soft so what I'm going to do with it I am going to stick the cup the back of a cup or you can take your you know your this part of your hand which right now I can't remember the world for so uh, this part base of your palm I don't I know best, yeah the base of my palm this thing here and I just kind of put them on a cutting cookie sheet and I squish them down and this is it. I'm going to put some fresh rosemary, some sea salt, some um, olive oil. Not organized, but this I think works better. Do not use glass just in case it breaks because okay, it has happened. Because we, we, we do that too. Um, we use a potato masher, just push it down uh, slightly. <laughs> Whatever is convenient for you. I mean, yeah, just, just, just imagine it's somebody who's annoyed you that day yeah. and no. Well, I have so many of those people lately. I don't know what I will do. Okay, so Gianji's mashing, smashing, not mashing, smashing those potatoes. So uh, everything's come to a boil here. So I'm just going to add the obligatory, is that the right word? Black pepper without breathing it in. Be generous with the black pepper. Absolutely. And then we're going to give that a stir. And then it's come to a boil, lower the heat and essentially cook it away for two and a half, two to three hours, depending on the size of your lamb shanks until the meat is falling off the bone. You could halfway through flip the lamb shanks over if you can't be bothered. If you're going out and it's in the slow cooker, it's not the end of the world, they'll be perfectly fine. So we're going to cover this and lower the heat. Back to you, Gianji. Okay, so I just put a nice amount of olive oil, a very generous side of salt. I mean, I love salt on my potato because it gives, when the salt kind of melts, it gives a crunch to it. Fresh rosemary that I just picked this morning from my garden, put it right on top of it. Now this recipe also is on my blog. So if you ever wanted to do it, I will put the link underneath it. But as you can see, while the lamb is inside, we can do this because the lamb needs to rest for a couple of minutes while you take it out. So this will finish cooking process. And um, that's pretty much all I'm going to do here. Put them in the oven 
maybe a little bit more salt. Okay, a little bit more olive oil. Now I put it under a, a parchment paper on the, I put them over a parchment paper so they don't get stuck to the pan. And when you can pull them out, they look just perfect. And there's never enough salt. Aslan is the pepper lady. I am the salt lady. Hey, yin and yang. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. As you can see, they're perfect to go in the oven. Awesome. And I'm putting them in for another 15 minutes. And we are done with that part. Cool. So now let's just chat. So while we're waiting, right? Yeah. So um, next week, we're not going to go live. We, uh, no. But we are coming the week after, right? Yep. And that will be, Aslan will be hosting it on her, on her channel. And we are going to be preparing side dishes for Easter, something just to kind of, which are favorites and to kind of work on that. Of course, if you have any favorites and you would like to learn how to make, right please let us know send, send a little note to Aslan send a little note to me we'll be more than happy to try to make it for you but I think right now we're just kind of waiting for my little lamb to come out and then we are pretty much done right then we'll dish out because I made I made a portion earlier that's done that um, almost nearly burned but didn't quite so what you're doing at Easter then Gianji? what I'm doing at Easter is very simple we are going to be just three of us and it's very nice and quiet. And I usually you have this meal, rack of lamb with the potatoes. And I just made all the roasted potato. I cut the regular potato, cut them, same process. And some green bean gremolata or something else, some dessert. But we're staying home. We're really enjoying being at home on Easter. So, mm -hmm. And on Easter day, I can have coffee and chocolate again. So you know what I'm going to have that morning. I give up every year coffee and chocolate for lint i have for the last 20 20 years okay well done yeah so i've been living on edge guys <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot of things well tell me about it <laughs> it's like my son bar i barely see him at mom and he, yes and he go okay i gotta go <laughs> Is that <laughs> so what about you, Aslan? What are you going to do for Easter? Um, yeah, I usually host Easter lunches as I do Christmas, but uh, as you know, Jaya, I just lost my mom two or three weeks ago, so I'm not in the mood. So yeah, um, I'm just I'm just going to um, uh, suggest that we go over to our in-laws because my mother-in-law doesn't cook and is very proud of it. Um, so I'm going to suggest that we just go over as, as, as we do from time to time and I don't know, do an Easter egg hunt, although the youngest is 14. So they're all growing up and but still, you know, okay, actually the youngest is 12 because we have a, I have a niece who's 12. So yeah, I think we'll probably just do that and then have a takeaway because like I said, my mother-in-law doesn't cook. So. <laughs> But you know, it's, it's, it, I, I love to cook and I'm very fortunate because all I come from a good line. My grandmother was an excellent cook. My mother, very yeah, cook. yeah same, my, same here. My dad my was family. an excellent cook. So, and I didn't cook until I was 27. I mean, let's face it, I didn't touch a pan if my life depended on it. So, it, you know, I, I, I lived, I cooked, you know, but the basics, like one, two, three, and there it goes. So I always enjoy having it here you know having my I actually love having holidays at home for some odd reason but it would be nice once in a while just to kind of go somewhere else like you know somebody Sometimes, else but like 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 when I lost George in 2000 yeah. I'm so sorry to be de depressing <laughs> today but when I lost George in 2019 uh, that's my late husband by the way if you guys are wondering um so that Christmas obviously I wasn't gonna cook because you know yeah. I didn't know what was going on essentially but so I went over to my in-laws and my sister-in-law did the cooking yeah okay I totally appreciate it <laughs> but, <laughs> but the gravy came out of a box the stuffing came out of a box Oh, oh, the only thing we, I, I think we may have had our own homemade Christmas pudding because I think my um, Sapphire made it. So she would have been 15 then or something like that. And she made Christmas pudding that year. So, so yeah, it's nice to have somebody cook for you. But I mean, come on. <laughs> I I have a couple of stories of that. I, I, I know, unfortunately, a couple of people who have made 
mashed potato and everybody kind of came back for yeah. this place. You oh forgot, my God. Oh, this is not your potato. What did you do to those things? I was like, I don't know. Say, can we just don't eat them? Like, no, you can't. You must eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Terrible. Stop being such a snob, Jandy. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, when everybody's okay, I'm French. So, what do you found of my mashed potato? Butter, 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 and a lot of heavy cream. So they're like this. And then my grandmother taught me how to make them. So they're this rich and just funny, oh, delicious mashed potato. And then when you have them with um, with broth and no salt, no pepper, and no butter, you just kind of like, what did I just eat? Yeah, I know, I know. I remember, I remember, I hate to say this, I remember some years ago. I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, we, some of us make our own mayonnaise and all that stuff, but, you know, some of us yeah. also buy it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, one, year, one year, I thought, right, I'll try the low fat or no fat one, and oh my God, it tasted of absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I think we should have a video one day of all our mishap in the kitchen. I think we're just going to be laughing our head off because I have done things like that sometimes. I have cooked things that I put salt in it versus pepper. I have food that I've prepared that put the wrong oil. Amazing. Oil makes a difference. Right? Uh, I do things I do things like that live. I remember some years ago on Google Plus, I was doing a, a, a chari charity thing for some a sports thingy in the US and so I was cooking Chinese Sichuan, Sichuan chicken or something like that so I was meant to be putting uh, Chinese rice wine in but I'd also made a margarita to start off with so I ended up putting, I ended up putting tequila on live, live show okay. but I suppose I suppose what beats it all is when my shaker went poof when I was making Singapore sling live one day so you know oh my God. there you go you know, I, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because I had, I made a, 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 a lychee martini video and then as I'm sitting there, I say, just be very careful. Everything went. I mean, it was so, so of course we clean up and we cut it because it wasn't live, right? But I yeah. had to add that piece to yeah, the of end course. of it because it was just so funny because the glass went, the vodka went, everything went. <laughs> and you go, okay, nothing broke. Nothing broke. So <laughs> Let me check on my lab here. It's almost done. <laughs> I know. Sometimes we just have fun. I mean, I, I sometimes I can be the, the biggest elephant in my own china cabinet. It's just kind of funny. So oh yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I am I'm like that. I can be a little bit clumsy and got butter thing, butter fingers. Yeah, that's what you oh. say. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I, I'm just I literally everybody and I am the elephant in the China cabinet and <laughs> everybody walks away from me. Even my dog either stays behind me, which have you noticed he's not here today? No, where is he? He's over there. He's by himself <laughs> with Alex. Oh. So he got, he's, usually he comes right here, goes, runs to it, and he sits right on that corner. And he's never in my kitchen because you know he's going to get chewed. You know, and I have some friends who uh, I have their dogs at my house. I train them to sit there. So I have three little faces usually right there looking like what's coming so funny uh, let's get back to our cooking shall we yeah totally okie dokie there you go guys done awesome i can see i can see the crust from over here looks really good it is pretty good so what i'm going to do i'm going to take it out and put it on um usually you're supposed to let it rest for 10 minutes but for yeah. all purpose and intended, I am going to actually put it on the plate so you can see what it looks yeah. like. Okay, and it's hot, so just be very careful. Very, very hot. And boom. Now, uh, there is one rack is for two people. There is eight to sometimes between seven eight ribs and you can cut that in half so i am going to come over here and show you how pretty this look oh i love that looks amazing i absolutely okay. love that crust oh, i do too it's my favorite crust but it, so, stays, uh, it stays green um instead of getting yes. a little bit brown mm. because of the butter and because of everything put together and because it's not in the oven long enough to turn mm. that color so that's why i think everybody loves this dish because it never really changed the color you're right let me check my potatoes they're almost done so i 
you know what, why don't I just cut a rib and see how it looks inside? Yep. Shall we do that? Perfect. I yep. am going to move this because the last thing yep. I want is you burn do myself. that. I'll just have a drink. We need to do an, another Sunday brunch so I can have a drink with you. We should invite a few other people there. Might be more fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. So shall we cut? Go down between the ribs. Now this is cooked. Oh, it looks perfection. perfect. Perfect color. Per perfect. This is it. This is all done. I can cut two more. Now everybody present this a little differently. I try so many times to put the little ribs crisscrossing. Can never seem to be able to do it properly, but I'm going to try to do it for you today. Okay, I'm gonna clean this mess and take my knife out of here. Make sure you rinse my hands, I'm sorry. And let me try to get my potatoes out. Okay. I'll hang on for you and then I'll serve up. I'll serve mine up. Okay. All righty, let's see. You know what, Aslan, do you want to serve up yours? Because I think okay, cool. I have one more, one more minute. Yeah, one more okay, cool. So Gianji's potato, so, so well, actually, let me just serve this up and then I'll talk. So the beauty about the lamb shank is that, you know, you can serve it up right like that. And it's, it's a pretty impressive plate of food, really, when you think about it. So we've got some, we've got carrots in there. I'm just gonna place that because I'm gonna wobble and that's gonna fall off. So we've got, I made just the one lamb shank because you know, four lamb shanks, I'm gonna have to eat it again and again and again. <laughs> again. <laughs> so, it doesn't anyway. matter how much you love it, right? <laughs> so, so look, so we've got, we've got carrots in there still and we've got a very thickish gravy because the celery and the onions have essentially, you know, over the space of two, two and a half hours, they've practically fallen apart. If you want your carrots to be, to have a little bit more bite, then place them in there in the last 45, 30, 45 minutes or 60 minutes of cooking time. So, you know, if you prefer it like that, but I love soft carrots in stew, you know, and, and this is slow braised lamb shank. So we've got gravy in there and those carrots are incredible, really. So we just lose the, don't want our herbs in there. So we just lose the bay leaves or not. So there we go. I'm just going to place that away and essentially this is a slow braised lamb shank that was standing up and it will be again there you go <laughs> there we go and you can see the pieces of carrots in there and you know I, I I love this because when I've got a sit down meal and you know I I, I cook for people um I'm a I'm a a personal chef um well haven't done it this year yet um so this is one another favorite with my clients because it's so easy and such an impressive dish and um quite often um i get requests to make these for people and just they'll come over and pick it up because oh, you know that's wonderful. it they just need to dish it up that's all i that's don't even right. need to go over and cook for them so there you have it slow braised lamb shanks and it's got a ready ready-made gravy there so you can see with carrots you know how many carrots you have completely depends on how many you put in the first place so there you Wonderful. go it looks absolutely amazing and i know uh, they someday very soon i will be in your kitchen enjoying your cooking one day oh one yes. Day yes, yes. Yes, yes yes of course yes 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 because because your son is coming over to london to study isn't he Yes, he is. He's all excited. And I'm even more excited than he is. I get to come travel more. So, no, he's, he's truly excited. He cannot wait. And we are, um, he's getting all the paperwork done. So, okay, my potatoes are all out of the oven. 
And I usually have a salad and I usually put a couple of little crunchy potatoes all around it or on the side or in the front, whichever you wanna do it. I should probably put a couple in the front too, but I don't like to take away the beauty of it. So I'm gonna move this forward and the potatoes in the back. And if you wanna put a little salad, that will be also there available, but here's the potatoes. Let's see how much mess can I make this time. There you go, the potatoes with the two rack of lambs. Oh, that looks wonderful. That really yeah, looks and wonderful. And it's and, all and, done. And Jandi's potatoes, her, her crushed potatoes. Yeah, is that what you call them? I call them crushed potatoes. The, uh, crushed we'll potatoes. I will put, uh, put the link underneath it. Are perfect for this lamb as well. We, 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 we if we have it um, uh, at Easter and um, at uh, Christmas time, we have it with mashed potatoes on the side. Or at Christmas, it will be roast potatoes for sure, because you can't have Christmas lunch without roast potatoes, obviously. No, you can't. <laughs> you cannot. So, so yeah, so any, any kind of potato, side potato dish will go perfectly with this to soak up all those juices. And same thing with this, you know, I make this kind of potatoes, but gratin dauphinois is excellent. And that's more, but that's more for you winter fare. You know, if in the winter time, autumn and fall, Autumn and winter, I would recommend making the the gratin dauphinois, which is potato sliced with cheese and cream yeah. and whatnot. But in the summer and the spring, I like this dish, this potato much easier because it's a it's faster. As you can see, if I would not have parboiled them, I could have done it well. The first twelve minutes, and the, the lamb was in the in the oven. And it's literally you start them at the same times, you finish them at the same times, as you can see. So it's a very easy. And this goes well, it's a quick recipe, it goes well, like any other potato with almost everything that you make. So it's a very quick, easy recipe. So if, even if college students on a small little oven can do this in their, on their, in their school. So, so there you guys go, guys, we are all done. So Aslan made her lamb shank for all. Yeah, slow braised lamb shanks. Yeah, slow braised lamb shanks. And I make a rack of lamb with a parsley cloth. I hope you like this video. I hope you go to our pages and do create this in your kitchen as well. So Aslan link will be underneath this. So it's mine. Like I say earlier, we are not going to be here next week. We'll be here on the 8th of April. Aslan will be hosting. So sign up on our webs on our YouTube channel, sign up on mine, and we will have a reminder for all of you going out on Thursday so you can click the little bell so you can just follow us and be live with us while we are having fun cooking right absolutely absolutely and if you're lucky Gianji will spill something else next time as well <laughs> hey, i've been trying so hard this time not to do it everybody <laughs> was laughing at that because my computer is kind of angled and that's why it's like oh. <laughs> so, guys thank you so very much everyone for being here um have a fabulous fabulous weekend Aslan, as usual, is a fabulous for cooking with you. And um, closing words, thank you, everyone, with love and gratitude. Thank you.